Well, I'm Steve. Live on Bribey Island, beautiful place. Moved here from Port Douglas. And everyone says to me, why would you move from Port Douglas? Cyclones, that's the main reason. And my wife is English and she hated Port Douglas. So we're living on Bribey. We just, funny enough, we discovered Bribey when we're sailing down the east coast of Australia by accident, and that's how we ended up here. We love the island. Um, I've been in tourism a lot of my life. I've been a tour guide in the Daintree. I've worked in Hartley's Crocodile Adventures, driving boats and catching crocodiles. Uh, I've worked up in the Northern Territory in Swim Creek Station, driving airboats. So we've done a, a few different jobs. And I thought it was time that my wife had a more civilised place to live and enjoy herself. So that's how we ended up on Ribey. Applying for Master Chef Australia was not actually my idea. That was my wife's idea. So that was actually Master Chef Australia number one. And I had no idea that she'd applied. And we were actually sailing off the east coast of Australia somewhere. And I got a phone call. Some random person rang me up and said, oh, you've been selected for MasterChef Australia. You know, we want you to fly to Sydney. Um, this is the dates at start. So you good for this? And I'm sort of like thinking, what is this? Is this a, like a hoax phone call? And then my wife heard me say MasterChef Australia. And she goes, starts flagging me. And she says, oh, yeah, I put you in this competition for cooking, you know, because you, you're a good cook. So I got invited to the very first one. We would have come, except we had a cyclone in Port Douglas and the airport was closed, couldn't get out of town, so they filmed without me. So I ended up in 16. So I guess I only waited 16 years to do that dream, uh, but I'm glad I did, and it's an amazing experience. Probably the biggest challenge for me was being away from Bribey Island, being away from my wife, it was a challenge. It's a long time away. You don't have much contact. Uh, and it's a, a massive uh, investment in your life, you know, it, to spend that time down there. And they're huge days. I mean, some days, you know, we'd be cooking all day, you know, so you cook 10, 14 hours. So massive days. And uh, it can get quite lonely when you're away from your family, although you are surrounded by a bunch of fantastic people, but it's not your family. So one of my most memorable moments, well, I actually have, I think, two, so I'll share both. First was when Jamie Oliver tasted my bourbon tamarind pork belly, and that was in the first couple of weeks. And Jamie Oliver says to me, this dish is fantastic, and if you cook like this, you're gonna win the competition. And the second amazing moment was when we were in Bendigo, and I was cooking the French mystery box, and I've got this world-class chef, John Christophe, come up to me, give me a kiss on the cheek and say, I'm an honourable, honourable French man now because he loved my sauce so much and presented me with the French flag. And that was pretty amazing. So it's interesting, MasterChef changed the way I cook because I used to take all day to cook something. And in MasterChef, you have like an hour to cook something. So I had to rearrange the way I wanted to cook my food and make an all day cook happen in 60 minutes. So that's a big change. And also you need to pack huge amounts of flavor because you're up against 21 other fantastic cooks. And it's a competition at the end of the day and you go in every day. It's like this never ending triathlon. You go in, you win it, you come home and next morning you wake up and you've got another race. So. That's how it's changed. I can now cook a really delicious meal in a short amount of time. I don't have to take all day to do it. Look, I first got into cooking because, would you believe, at 18 years old, my mother gave me a women's weekly cookbook. And uh, I started cooking those dishes out of that book. I traveled a lot for my job back in those days. I actually traveled all over the world. And, um, you know, traveling with a company, you have your expense account, you go out, you eat in these beautiful restaurants and it's all paid for. And then I get back to Australia and suddenly realize that I can't afford to do it or I don't have the same restaurants. So I thought to myself, if I want to eat that beautiful food, I have to learn to cook it myself. So it became a hobby. The other thing is my mother, she's an artist, like a professional artist. She paints paintings and sells them in art galleries. That's what she does. And I think my cooking is my form of artwork. So I, my friends come for dinner and we sort of call my cooking my, my five minutes of art 
because it's like a piece of art put in front of you. You get to enjoy it for five minutes and then it's gone forever. So it's really that five minutes of art. I would have said before MasterChef my signature dish was a quail dish, which I cooked many times and I've cooked it for my wife a lot and family and friends. But since being on MasterChef, I think I have to say my signature dish is my whiskey tamarind pork belly because it was such a highlight on the show. So I'd say that's really one of my signature dishes now and it's delicious, so everyone loves it. So living on Bribey has changed the way I do use some of my produce. Coming from North Queensland, obviously I used to catch reef fish and you know, I considered a small fish five or 10 kilo. Bribey Island, totally different. Fish are different, so I get whiting, I get squid, you know, yes, there's the bay prawns, there's, you know, so it's, it's, it's a very different produce. And we've got some beautiful farms around the area, some beautiful produce. We've got fantastic berries. So I've changed the style of cooking because I'm very much into cooking local food, local produce. I don't like food traveling lots of miles to get to me. I want to present stuff from the local area. I can see it changing just in the short time I've been here. So we've been here about seven years and it's changed a lot. When we got here, it was very much the, the RSL, the Bowls Club, they were all the, you know, the popular places. The population's changing. You know, with the new estates, there's younger families, there's people with more money moving in, big canal estates. Some, look at some of the houses that are being built, ridiculous. So people are looking for a bit more. And also I think with the, COVID and the international travel being reduced. People aren't going away as much overseas. So they want to bring those overseas dishes home. So I can see Bribey Island's food culture getting more complex, getting more variety, moving away from those, you know, traditional burgers and fish and chips and moving into the more, what I consider, refined dishes. My advice for aspiring chefs or home cooks is do what I did, experiment. Don't totally rely on cookbooks. A lot of the people in the competition, they relied so much on a cookbook. You know, they, they, they learn a recipe, they practice it over and over on the chance that they might be able to cook it. They get in there, they couldn't cook it, they fall over. I try to bring all my recipes out from my heart, from my head, so I make all my dishes myself. You can't Google them because I create them and experiment with flavors, but the most important thing work with the great ingredients that you have locally because if you use great ingredients you can't go wrong so where am i going now after master chef look i want to bring really good food to bribey island and this area that's really what i want to do my passion for cooking my passion for giving people good food for pleasing them that's what i want to do so how do we do that how do i do that do i do a pop-up do i open up something do i work in a restaurant that's to be to de determined, I think. We don't, I don't really know exactly how that's going to form, but keep your eyes out. Who knows? I might do a pop-up restaurant somewhere and, you know, you can come along and eat my food. I might even come to your house and cook. Guys, if you see me, don't be shy. Come up and say hello. I'm happy to talk to you guys. Anyone that wants to talk, talk to me and ask me how I went, by all means, come up. I can give you some inside tips and keep an eye on my Instagram page. So Steve O Wild Chef is my Instagram page. So if you look on there, you'll see some interesting stuff coming up just in the next week.